G'day everyone, it's Chris and welcome to this special. Now this is normally a behind the scenes thing for Patreons, but I'm bringing it in the month of August just to show you what sort of perks you can get if you join me over there. So if you want to know what equipment I use, how I set the studio up, why I do what I do, hang around. <laughs> All right, you, my awesome Patreons, seriously. Um, thanks for supporting me and well, this is your video around my behind the scenes and today it's gonna to be a studio tour. And before you even go further, I've got braces. Ah, oh, gosh, what was I thinking? Um, so I'm gonna try and talk as clearly as I can. I'm learning still to talk with them. So let's jump straight into it, okay. First of all, you're watching me on my Lumix LX10. This camera um, I've had for about a year and a half now and love it very much. It's got a one inch sensor like the Sony um, uh, 100 series, uh, very compact and small. Got a flip up screen so I can see myself to get composition, but otherwise, there's actually like an app on the phone so I can uh, remotely control it and uh, check my framing when I'm doing stuff that's a bit further away from the camera. And uh, yeah, all in all, very much happy with it because I used to have like, so I actually used to have like bigger cameras uh, back when I started YouTube in 2009, I think it was, or 2007, I've been on there ages, but haven't been very serious about it up until lately. I had video cameras back then, uh, so if you watch my early, earliest, my first work, definitely it's a video camera. Uh, so I've had Canon, I've had Sony video cameras. And then I went SLR, and this is my last SLR. This is like a Sony A55. This is, um, I, I do like it. You know, you've got interchangeable lenses, which is always nice. Uh, but that said, just, you know, if you travel and you do uh, vlogs, you do uh, travel videos, um, carrying something around like this with another lens and you know a, a microphone on top, it's tiring, it's very tiring. So that's why I got this camera and haven't regretted it. In fact, this thing is awesome. Uh, could go on and on, but I won't. Let's get on to the next thing. My Yeti blue microphone. Um, the This is a semi-professional microphone and uh, uh, I love this because, well, um, it's got uh, not one but three condenser microphones inside of it and uh, they're actually inside there and, and it's a side addressing microphone so you actually talk to it this way not straight down that way. Um, you can change the pattern or the pickup pattern so you can either be just front addressing and it then cancels out the noise from behind, uh, omnidirectional, uh, there's different patterns and um, yeah this has a, been a very good addition to my studio but I learned quickly that uh, you know, when you're talking to it you can get uh, pops and uh, wind sounds so that's why I got this massive wind sock for it and it makes it looks like it makes it look like um, one of those characters from uh, Mario uh, what's that what character's name? Toad. <laughs> is it Toad? Maybe. All right. Now supporting this microphone is obviously a microphone stand. And well, uh, this uh, microphone stand I got from like JB Hi-Fi for like $65. It's quite cheap. It's actually made of metal. Um, I think it's cheap because it hasn't got any real weight in the bottom and there's no way for me to put any sand in there uh, to uh, stop that from moving around. So for that reason I have got not one but four sandbags and uh, when you see my setup uh, for doing EV news, uh, renewable news and I'm on the desk uh, you'll see the sandbag counter leaving, counter leaving, is that really a word? Um, the weight of the actual uh, microphone so the uh, sandbags have been a good addition to the studio because um, Supporting the lights, good segue. Woo, you stay there. <laughs> supporting uh, my lights are of course some uh, uh, stands, some light stands as well, but uh, they, uh, they're they very flimsy, they're very light, and these things are a little bit heavy and they're prone to tipping over. So using sandbags has been a very good addition. Very, very happy with that. All right, so these lights are, are just El Cheapos from um, eBay. Literally, I think they are like $100 maximum. Um, and the reason they're cheap, check it out. 
a massive compact fluorescent. Um, it's actually a photographic globe. Um, it's at 52 100 Kelvin. So I set the white balance of this camera to match that so that it actually looks like it is now, like normal, you know, normal skin tones. But otherwise, if I turn these on, which I will in a second, they're just extremely bright white, like a daylight white. And uh, it's not the sort of light you would use in your own home. Uh, very, very bright. And when I'm shooting in here, it's like, it's like Christmas. And because this is a, um, I kid you not, I think it's like a 1200 watt globe. Yeah, it gets hot, very hot in the summer. I really dislike shooting in here. Um, so when it gets too hot in the studio in summertime, I move to another room, which I'll show you another time. Uh, so yep, yeah, got two of these. Great bargain because they came with a light stand as well as uh, you know a diffuser. So you know it minimizes shadows. And what I do is I have one key light, that's the primary light basically that lights you. I've been experimenting, I'm still not quite right with it, but I'm getting close. And I offset it to like 45 degrees, so that highlights one side quite nicely and a little bit shown on the other side. And then the other one I use as a rim light, which is to say something that comes from the back to get an edge and that helps you pop and stand out from the background and uh, creates contrast and uh, interest for viewers. So. That's uh, the other one, which is just down there. I'm gonna show you on screen now. Teleprompter, a hey, homemade um, thing. I think I did a video on this. Maybe I did shoot it, but I didn't actually publish it. I, I do that sometimes. And um, literally a $10 picture frame from Kmart, a bit of MDF, some wooden dowels, set it at a 45 degree angle, normal glass, not the special glass I use actually in teleprompters. And then I just use an, uh, the Parrot app, um, which is free to download and use. And um, yeah, that's when I record shows. Um, half the time, uh, half the time, mm, two thirds of the time it's a script. Uh, the other third I'm just improvising and I pre-read and I just, you know, blurt out as much as I can. Um, so that's uh, my teleprompter and um, very much a great addition. I'm now looking into apps that actually listen um, and then can change the speed based upon your delivery uh, because a lot of mistakes occur that it gets ahead of me and when you're doing very technical stuff and you're telling numbers or using someone's name and they've got a very long title, that <laughs> that's very hard to read. And so having a professional teleprompter, someone will be off the off side and they would actually be uh, manually adjusting the speed as a reader would actually read it. Um, but there's actually apps out there that can listen to you and will change, change accordingly. So I'll let you know what I use when I find a great app. All right, now coming around to this side of the studio and it is a small space, it's literally like uh, three meters by two and a half meters, it's not that big. Um, maybe it's actually three by three and a half, but nonetheless, it's not a big space. Um, this is my lamster, which I took, you know, as a Kickstarter thing. Three years it took to get here, and I thought I'd never get it. Um, I use this just as a um, bit of an interest in the background, and look, even now. Yeah, it's a dodgy light, it's a dodgy light. Um, oh, there it goes. <laughs> um, so I use that in the background just as a bit of visual interest. It's controllable by Bluetooth. You can change the lights on it and things like that. Um, I also have some LEDs uh, set behind the desk. So uh, when you uh, see me on screen, Again, this just adds a little bit of visual interest to the, uh, the background instead of being flash and boring. Um, you know, adding light and changing the colors depending on the mood, I mean, <laughs> literally, I do that. So if you see red, I may be annoyed by something. And when you see blue, I may be happy by something. And then what I try to do is I um, match the lampster to that color. Don't always, but sometimes do. And this lamster light, I also uh, shoot it um, towards the edge of uh, my uh, head and the idea is that, that I'm trying to, um, there you go, got a blue going, um, I'm trying to get a bit of interest. So you see what's happening already? Look at that, hang on, I'm just going to pump it right up, mm -hmm. see what happens, and down, so that's about right. 
yeah. I get the occasional complaint from someone in the comments saying that the light's too bright. And it's kind of like, well, no, I, the exposure I have um, is actually um, for my face and that, and the uh, exposure should actually be pushing that down to like what it is. But nonetheless, um, yeah, it's just all part of the uh, show. Um, obviously, for those who don't know, I'm a kid at heart and I do love the Toy Story franchise. I've got a lot of the Toy Story figurines. Um, Zerg. <laughs> His batteries are getting flat. Um, uh, I've got quite a few of the Toy Story characters, uh, Woody and Jesse and Bullseye, um, but those figurines don't sit very well. I did have a figurine stand, but um, it, mm, it's not sad story. Mario Cube. I just changed this sort of stuff to keep it interesting and, you know, people do take note, but not always. Uh, big Doctor Who fan and Star Trek fan and Star Wars fan. Which do I prefer more? Mm, probably Star Trek. Yeah, Star Trek. Uh, let's come around to this part of the studio, moving around. So, just like with the LEDs over there, I've also got some at the back there. Now, obviously when I'm doing the EV News episode, I don't actually um, have these on because I'm sitting right next to them. And um, I'll put a photograph online now as to the mess I sit in when I'm doing a uh, EV Renewable News episode. And um, again, I just match the color and so, these, all these lights will be on when I'm doing a to camera piece standing up uh, or sitting down in front of the desk. Whereas when I'm behind the desk doing like a news episode, um, then I have to have these lights off because yeah, they're right next to me. They don't get warm, they're just LEDs and they're, they're cheap things from eBay for like about $12, $15. It's ridiculously cheap. Got a few more toys. I brought this. <laughs> I brought this home from work, and um, my daughter has gotten into it, and now taken apart these puzzles. So I'm going to have to put these back together. Good luck to me. Uh, I figured I'd do it. To get the footage of the stop motion of the changing of the studio, I used the GoPro. I just shot it um, in a 1080p uh, normal video recording. Um, you can do time lapse of these things and they're awesome and they're waterproof. Uh, one time, by the way, I accidentally had the door off when I um, went into a pool with it. Don't do that, damage it. Um, so I'll do a whole separate video about what's in my bag, about when I travel, because tomorrow, um, I'm going to interview some architects who do one of those sustainable houses that are very high energy efficiency. Um, it's like a nine star rated home, uh, which in Australia means a lot. You know, uh, in Australia we need, I think now if you're building, you need to build like a five star minimum home. Um, but to get nine stars, that means like uh, thermally efficient uh, doors, walls, glass, um, roof, insulation, insulation, um, solar, you name it. it. It it takes a lot to do that. And uh, so yeah, I'll definitely do another video on you know what I have in my bag, and yeah, watch out for that one. Next up, my Mac computer. Let's just get down there. Um, this is a 2018 MacBook Pro. I used to have an iMac from, God, it was a 2011 model, I think it was. It was old, it was slow. So I upgraded to this and it's been awesome. Super fast processing. I use Final Cut Pro to um, you know, edit with. Um, $500 purchase and as painful as that was, it's awesome because you can do lots of complicated things with it and graphics and lookup tables. And uh, it's just amazing. It's a very powerful app and uh, at first it was very much overwhelming but uh, I've gotten used to it and very much appreciate having the ability to have um, been privileged enough to have awesome software. I'm currently shooting with my Rode um, wireless microphone system. Um, the app on my phone, so when I'm out in the field, I record audio to my mobile phone using a HD audio recorder, but that appears to be bucky and crashing at the moment. Um, so the uh, one of my recent uh, videos I did, um, the audio in one bit was distorted and I don't know why that occurred. Anyway, basically this is the microphone itself and uh, that wisely transmits to the receiver and the receiver just plugs into whatever you're going to record with. So right now I'm recording straight into the computer. 
And uh, yeah, um, you know, uh, this is about $300 uh, wireless microphone system, which is actually quite cheap. Um, and I need another one. I really do need another one, but that's I'm saving for that one. That'll be my next purchase, definitely. I, no, I need, wait, good segue again. Um, uh, hard drives. I've had hard drives fail on me, and I'll show you some very sad video in a second of one of them. This is a, uh, a Samsung T5 uh, 512 gig SSD. Uh, very fast, very capable lightning connection. Uh, lightning connection? So they call it Thunderbolt. Thunderbolt connection. And uh, uh, I actually put all the videos and footage onto that, and I edit off that, and I keep this hard drive. It's because it's only 512 gigabyte SSD inside the MacBook Pro. So I use the external drive to actually put all the footage onto, and then when I finish and publish a project, I move it to, you can't see it, but I'll point, put it on camera now, a um, external um, hard drive, just a normal spinning drive. I think it's like a two or three uh, terabyte, and that thing's kind of corrupt. Like there's a library issue which, um, you know, if you actually know how to fix this, let me know. Uh, and I can still get footage off it, and I can transfer things to it, but Final Cut Pro is not behaving very nicely with this drive. And when I produced the Yak and Dander video, part of the uh, deal I did with um, the, the, the guys from Yak and Dander, and hey Matt, if you're watching, um, was that I agreed to share the footage with them and you know that's perfectly fine it's a great deal I, I got half a day of their time and um, in return I just shared the drone footage and the b-roll stuff that you know I produced from there but getting that footage was crazy hard because this hard drive has been playing up for the last three four months so I need to replace it um, you know at the end of the day it's only got to be what one 150 bucks to get a new hard drive but a lapel wireless lapel microphone is a high priority at the moment because it's kind of still working and it doesn't look very professional when you go to interview somebody and you say hey here have this wired microphone and oh you guys be tethered together oh and you're going to need to actually um, be plugged into my mobile phone it, it's not a good look is it no <laughs> so that's definitely on the radar for the next one so tomorrow I think I'm gonna just take that row um, the Yeti microphone and set it on a table and do the interview that way and I just put the, that into the omnidirectional mode and um, maybe in, in a month or maybe for Christmas I'll get myself another wireless lapel mic um, and well look thanks to you guys for supporting the channel because you know, the, the, the support that you provide helps buy these pieces of equipment so again massive thanks next up I've got my Kogan 4k TV and this thing is garbage <laughs> do not buy it I thought it was a cool idea to have a massive 43 inch um, monitor to edit with and yeah that's that's great and all but um, the color reproduction is terrible um, the scaling the resolution uh, because it's a, com a, a computer feeding an image to it is also terrible um, you can definitely buy TVs um, that can accept a computer feed. There's a technical term for it. I think it's like the 444. Um, oh, I don't know. I forget. I'm having a bit of brain fart. Anyway, and um, by doing that, uh, yeah, it's good. I can actually um, visualize and see on how it's going to look to you if you're watching um, my videos on YouTube. Um, so it is great for that, but it's not a very good monitor. So much further down the stream, probably next year, I don't know, I'll get a different true uh, computer monitor. But at the moment, no, no. And I will not be buying Apple's, you know, like 5K, 6K screen with that <laughs> 999 uh, um, stand. That's ridiculous, Apple. Crazy, crazy. I do, I do love Apple. They make great products. Um, but sometimes the pricing is just, what were you thinking? All right, so I guess, look, that's basically really it. The um, thing I love about having a dedicated space in which to shoot is that I can literally turn on one PowerPoint over there, the lights come on, a few more switches over here, and I've always got this thing ready to go, battery in, SD card in, hit record, and I shoot. And, you know, one of the things with creating YouTube videos is that you can write it, <laughs> but then you've got to shoot it 
But then after you shoot it, you've got to make the effort to edit it. And then you've got to make the effort to publish it. And you know, with life getting in the way, it's it it can be uh, tiring sometimes and you don't feel in the mood. But by doing what I'm doing and making a promise to myself and setting a schedule and trying to stick to it, uh, it, it's been a, it's been a great exercise in you know dedication basically, and uh, I think that the reason I do what I do is that uh, there are people who um, advocate and do you know like demonstrations or maybe they write to the local politician or maybe I don't know that, that there's many different ways in which you can support a cause and for me I, I like doing video there's a hobby of mine and so I just figure one of the best ways in which to get the message out there is to do video and that's why I do what I do um, so I feel I'm forgetting something not really. Oh, there was an amplifier down there with my Yamaha center channel speaker there. Um, that's why I hear the audio and music through, um, trying to make sure the balance is right. When I um, produce the videos, I try to uh, get it between the six to zero, negative six to zero decibel uh, range so that the sound is consistent. But you know, with music, they sometimes do some really awesome uh, tweaking with the, um, the equalization when they're recording it, and it just sounds louder. And uh, one of the criticisms I have lately was um, your music was way louder than your voice. And it's like, well, no, on the, um, on the channels, on the meters, on the audio meters, they, they were fine, they were identical, but it just sounds louder. Um, yeah, I need to watch out for that. So I do have a good quality center speaker here that I can actually hear things very, very nicely. And um, yeah, uh, it's, it's nice to have, and the Epifor is a very cheap, cheap old app that I've had for many, many years, but it does a job and I don't need anything more than that really. All right, so again, thank you so much for supporting me. I hope you have a great one. And if you do nothing, be good, be great.